For thousands of years, the natural world has been shaped by an unbreakable law. When a species disappears, it's gone forever. Extinction has always been a one-way street until now. In the last two decades, an extraordinary shift has begun in science, using ancient DNA, precision genetic editing, and advanced cloning technology. Searchers are actively working to bring long-dead creatures back to life. The field is called de-extinction, and it's no longer just theory, it's reality. Around the globe, teams are sequencing genomes from frozen carcasses, preserved bones and museum specimens, then rewriting them inside the DNA of living relatives. What was once the stuff of science fiction is now taking its first steps in laboratories and research centers. And the first animal to break extinction's grip has already returned, the dire wolf. But this is just the beginning. From ice age giants to vanished island birds, the list of candidates for resurrection is growing longer by the year. Today, we'll explore 10 extraordinary creatures that scientists are determined to revive how they lived, why they vanished, and what bringing them back could mean for our planet. N-U-M-B-E-R-1, the dire wolf. Step back more than 10,000 years to the final days of the ice age, and you would have found one of the most fearsome predators ever to roam North America, the dire wolf. Larger, stronger, and more heavily built than modern wolves, it could weigh up to 70 kilograms, with jaws designed to crush bone and teeth that could strip flesh from bison, wild horses, and mammoths. For hundreds of thousands of years, the dire wolf ruled as a top predator. But when the ice age ended, climate change and the extinction of its prey drove it to disappear. For millennia, it was nothing more than fossilized bones and a name in history books until now. Using cutting edge genetic engineering, Colossal Biosciences has recreated a living wolf with many of the physical traits of its ancient ancestor. By modifying 20 specific sections of the modern wolf genome, scientists have restored its size, jaw power, and muscular frame, creating the closest living replica of the dire wolf ever achieved. This isn't just a symbolic revival, it's the first real proof that extinction can work. And it's a signal to the world. We can bring the past back to life. Number two, the woolly mammoth. Perhaps the most famous face of extinction, the woolly mammoth is the ultimate ice age icon. Standing up to four meters tall and weighing over six tons, it was covered in thick shaggy hair and armed with massive curved tusks. Mammoths roamed the frozen steppes of Eurasia and North America until about 4,000 years ago, when warming climates and human hunting brought them down. But unlike most extinct animals, many mammoths were preserved in permafrost frozen and astonishing conditioned skin. Hair, muscles, and even stomach contents intact. One specimen, a young female named Yuka, was found with her brain and spinal cord preserved. The challenge is that mammoth DNA, even in these well-kept remains, is still fragmented and incomplete. The solution, scientists are using the Asian elephant, its closest living relative as a genetic base. By inserting mammoth traits such as cold resistant fat, thick hair, and smaller ears into elephant DNA, they hope to create a cold adapted hybrid. Beyond the thrill of revival, reintroducing mammoths could help restore Arctic ecosystems, slow permafrost thawing, and even reduce greenhouse gas emissions. If all goes well, the first mammoth elephant hybrid could be born by March 2030, the dodo. Few creatures symbolize human caused extinction like the dodo. This large, flightless bird once lived exclusively on the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. When Europeans arrived in the 17th century, they brought with them hunting, habitat destruction, and invasive animals like rats and pigs that devoured dodo eggs. Within less than 100 years, the dodo was gone forever, or so it seemed. Today, scientists plan to bring it back by using the Nicobar pigeon, its closest living relative. E. By comparing the dodo's reconstructed genome to that of the pigeon, they can identify and insert key genetic traits such as body size, bone structure, and feather type into living bird embryos. The revived dodo wouldn't be a perfect copy, but it could be functionally identical. Still, the big question is, if the dodo returns, will Mauritius be ready for it? Or will history repeat itself? N-U-M-B-E-R-4 The Tasmanian Tiger, Thylacine Despite its name, the Tasmanian tiger wasn't a feline at all. It was a marsupial predator with a dog-like body and stripes along its back. Native to Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea. 
It vanished in the 20th century after European settlers hunted it to protect livestock, destroyed its habitat, and introduced competing predators. The last known thylacine died in captivity in 1936. Now, it's 90 years later, researchers at the University of Melbourne and Colossal Biosciences are leading an ambitious project to bring it back. The process involves reconstructing the thylacine genome using preserved DNA, then editing it into the cells of a small marsupial relative. Marsupials add an extra challenge since they're young, develop mostly outside the womb in a pouch, but scientists believe that within a decade, the first baby thylacine could be born a creature not seen alive for generations. Oh, number five, the passenger pigeon. The bird that once ruled the skies there was a time. Not too long ago when the skies of North America were alive with a sound like distant thunder, a sound that wasn't from storms, but from the beating wings of billions of passenger pigeons. These birds didn't just travel in flocks, they moved in living clouds. Eyewitnesses described their migrations as waves that could take hours even days to pass overhead, blotting out the sun. In the mid 1800s, their numbers were so vast that scientists estimate they made up more than a quarter of all birds in North America, or three to five billion individuals. But such abundance led to tragedy. As railroads expanded and cities grew, the passenger pigeon's fate was sealed. They were hunted relentlessly. Their meat sold cheaply in markets, their nesting grounds destroyed to make way for farmland. Industrial-scale slaughter meant that tens of thousands could be killed in a single day. The birds relied on massive flock sizes for survival, so once their numbers dipped below a certain point, they couldn't recover. By the dawn of the 20th century, what was once the most common bird on the continent had all but vanished. The end came quietly on September 1, 1914, when Martha, the last known passenger, Pigeon, died alone in her cage at the Cincinnati Zoo. But over a century later, hope is taking flight again. A pioneering group called Revive and Restore is using cutting-edge genetic engineering to bring the passenger pigeon back. By carefully piecing together fragments of DNA from museum specimens, they are reconstructing the bird's genetic blueprint. Then, using the band-tailed pigeon its closest living relative, they're inserting passenger pigeon traits into living cells. With the aim of creating a new generation of birds that look, behave, and fly like their extinct ancestors? If successful, this wouldn't tea just be a scientific milestone, could restore a key player to North America's ecosystems. Passenger pigeons played a crucial role in shaping forests, clearing old growth to make way for new plants, and feeding countless predators. Imagine standing in a clearing one day, and hearing that distant roar in the sky again. Watching the horizon darken as thousands upon thousands of wings sweep past, for some, it's a dream of righting a wrong from history. For others, it's a reminder that extinction is not always the end sometimes. It's just the beginning of a comeback story. Number six, the Smilodon, the apex predator of the Ice Age. Over 10,000 years ago, in the grassy plains and scrublands of the Americas, there prowled a predator unlike any seen today, the Smilodon, better known as the saber-toothed cat. Stocky, muscular, and built for power rather than speed. It was armed with two enormous curved canine teeth, each nearly eight inches long. With jaws that could open almost twice as wide as a modern lion's, the Smilodon was an ambush hunter, taking down massive prey like bison and even young mammoths with precision and force. Fossils found in the Labrie tar pits of California show that these cats lived in social groups, sometimes tending to injured members in unusually compassionate trait for such a fearsome carnivore. But even the kings of the Ice Age could not withstand the twin blows of climate change and human expansion. As temperatures rose and the great herds disappeared, the Smilodon's specialized hunting style became a liability. Within a few thousand years, this legendary predator was gone, leaving only bones and legends behind. For decades, it has captured the imagination of scientists and the public alike's image-gracing museum halls. Documentaries, and even Hollywood blockbusters. But bringing it back is a challenge unlike any other in extinction science, like the woolly mammoth, which has the elephant as a close genetic cousin. The Smilodon has no living relative suitable for genetic comparison or as a surrogate mother. Big cats like lions and tigers share a distant ancestry, but the genetic gap is too wide for current cloning or genome editing methods. Without a surrogate species, the idea of reviving the saber-tooth seems impossible with today's tools. And yet, 
researchers haven't given up. Some see the Smilodon as the ultimate proving ground for future biotechnologies, an animal whose revival will require breakthroughs in synthetic DNA construction, artificial wombs, and perhaps entirely new reproductive techniques. If that day comes, the return of the Smilodon would be more than a scientific marvel it would be a moment that blurs the line between prehistory and the modern world. Imagine walking through a protected reserve and seeing one of these muscular cats emerging from the shadows, fangs glinting in the sun. For now it remains a dream, a reminder of what's possible when science dares to chase the impossible. 7. The Cave Lion Bigger and more robust than modern lions, the cave lion prowled across Europe, Asia, and North America during the Ice Age. Its remains, including frozen cubs preserved in permafrost, have yielded high-quality DNA. Because it is closely related to modern lions, reviving it is far more feasible than reviving many other species. Scientists could use living lionesses as surrogates, creating a creature nearly identical to its Ice Age ancestor. While the project is still in early stages, the prospect of hearing a cave lion's roar echo through snowy landscapes is no longer impossible. Number 8. The Woolly Rhinoceros This massive cold-adapted herbivore roamed Europe and Asia until about 10,000 years ago. Covered in thick fur and equipped with enormous horns, it was built to survive freezing climates. Many well-preserved specimens have been found in permafrost, complete with intact DNA. Scientists believe they can reintroduce its traits into the genome of its closest living relative, the Sumatran rhinoceros. If successful, the woolly rhino could graze the tundra once again, helping to restore lost ecosystems. Number 9. The Moa The Moa was a flightless giant bird from New Zealand, with some species standing over 3 meters tall. Hunted to extinction by humans about 600 years ago, it has long fascinated researchers. However, the moa faces a major barrier to revival. It has no close living relative of similar size. The only related birds are small, flying tinamous from South America, which are biologically unsuitable as surrogates. Without breakthroughs in artificial incubation technology, the moa's return remains out of reach, but the dream persists. Number 10. The Giant Ground Sloth Milodon Last on our list is the Milodon a huge ground-dwelling sloth that lived in South America until about 10,000 years ago. Some remains are so well-preserved that skin, fur, and even dung have survived, making DNA recovery possible. But as with the moa, the lack of a suitable surrogate is a serious obstacle modern tree sloths are far too small to carry a milodon embryo. Artificial womb technology might one day solve this problem, but for now, the giant sloth remains a symbol of extinction's limits. From the dire wolf already alive in a lab, to the still-imagined Smilodon, Dextinction is rewriting our understanding of what's possible. Some see it as a powerful tool to restore ecosystems and correct past mistakes. Others warn that it risks playing God, distracting from urgent conservation work for species still here. The truth is, the technology is moving faster than the debate. Extinction may no longer be the end of the story, but whether we should turn the page is a question humanity still has to answer.